All right, so welcome to the Top Down Shooter Beginner Tutorial for Godot. So, if you've never used Godot before, it's a good idea to start talking about structure and stuff, but before we even get into that, you straight up need to install it. Fastest way to uh, find a website is just write Godot into the Google search, and then you can just click the first option, it's G-O-D-O-T, like go dot. You then scroll on down, hit the download button over here. It'll bring you to a page that looks like this. You want to download one of the standard versions, and it can be either one of these. It depends on your operating system and your computer, which one of these you are supposed to use. Just uh, get the one that you're supposed to use. It'll give you a zip file. It'll give you an executable. You just run that executable, and bada bing, bada boom, you have Godot on your computer. Super simple. Now, after you run Godot, you're going to be on a screen that looks somewhat like this right here. And without all these games and stuff inside of them. And we're going to go over here to the right where it says new project. You're going to click that button and we're going to make a new project over here. I'm going to call it the YouTube tutorial. Then I'm going to hit create folder on here. It'll make a folder inside of my uh, documents, right? And then I'm going to create and edit it inside of there. Now you'll appear on a screen that looks like this. We're going to be working with 2D inside of here. You'll see up here on the top of the screen, there are a bunch of different views that we can go through. You can click on each one of them and kind of see the difference. We're going to be working mostly in 2D and script inside of this. If you hit F1, you go to 2D, F2 will bring you to 3D, F3 will bring you to script, and F4 will actually bring up the help, which is counterintuitive, but it's how it functions. So if you hit F1 or you click the 2D up there, you will actually end up in a screen that looks like this, and this is where we're going to begin working today. You'll see on the top left over here that says create root node. If you click 2D scene on there, you'll get your first node, and today's lesson it's all going to be about nodes because uh, in order to understand anything about Godot, you've got to understand their node system. So what a node is, small bite-sized chunk of functionality that can have other nodes attached to it. It can also be attached to a node. You can think of it almost like building blocks. Like each node is a block that builds upon another block that builds upon another block. And this is kind of like that bottom block, you know, the one the foundation of the whole block. You can click on it to rename it and do other things as well. We're going to leave it as is right now. We're going to right click on it and hit add child node. And here you'll start to see all the different functionality that is inside of Godot, the pre-built functionality. And you can just pick any node that you want to attach to this as the child. What's it mean to be a child? We'll be going over that here in a second. If you look up Sprite, you'll see these two things over here that are related to the node 2D and have some uh, functionality based off of it. You want to double click on the sprite right here. Now, the sprite's functionality is to simply display, <laughs> display, display an image on the screen. So you'll see that there's a built in image over here, this icon.png built into the system. If you just drag that over to the texture, you'll see what the sprite does. Now, you'll see that doesn't exist inside of Node2D, but it completely exists inside of the sprite. So as a quick challenge real quick to see if you pick this up, let's see if you can make another sprite underneath Node2D and make it and have it have an icon of its own. Go ahead and try that now. So in order to do that, let's review. You right click on node 2D, you hit add child node, and you double click on sprite. It will make sprite 2. Now, if you right click on sprite, the first one, and then you hit add child node, you would have made a child of that sprite instead of making a child of the node 2D, which is not what we want. Now, if you click over here on one of these sprites and then you just drag over, it'll move and it'll move it over on the screen. And you'll see that I haven't dragged over the sprite icon on sprite two yet, so I'll do that now. And we can see each one of them separately and move them each separately without affecting one another. Now, if I right click on the first sprite and I make another sprite as a child of it, you'll see it doesn't say sprite two because it's on another level and it no longer needs to differentiate them on the same level. I'm going to make another uh, texture on this one. I'm going to move this child over like this so that it looks a little funky or you know what we'll just move it over like this. Then I'm going to move the parent. I'm going to click this parent right here so we have it selected. I'm going to move him and you'll see he automatically moves the child with him. And if I move it over like this the child can move independently but the parent will automatically drag the child with him 
And this one's still unaffected by those two because it has no relationship with them. It is neither the parent nor the child of either one of those. It is actually the child of our root node, node 2D. Now, if we were to somehow have something that we could move as node 2D, which we don't, that would, of course, move everything else. In fact, if we go over to node 2D and we click on transform, and then we simply click uh, the X position, we make it three, you'll see everything move right three because these are all children of node 2D. So the system is pretty universal like that and it works no matter where you are inside of the system. And the main thing that a child inherits from its parent is the position and rotation. So if we also rotate node 2D, you'll see everything rotate inside the whole system. If we rotate this parent right here you'll see once again everything move around like this as well. Now there are some other things that can be inherited as well, but uh, for now we're not going to really go over them because they're not as important for this tutorial series. So again, they're like building blocks that build upon one another and the parent affects the child, but the child does not affect the parent, right? And that is basically the bare essentials of how the node system works inside of Godot. Um, from here on forward, we're going to be starting to script. Uh, you'll see that a lot of the scripting has built-in functionality within each one of the nodes as well. And all scripting is, is interacting with Godot and interacting with the node. The code to do it though, it's like a, it's like a language of communication with those two things. So we'll start that on the next video. If you like this video, if you uh, learned something or I'm sorry, if you already kind of knew how nodes worked, <laughs> if you learned something or you liked it or you disliked it, I don't know, anything. Just leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking of this so far. And in the next uh, video, we're going to start going over uh, the bare information for how scripting works. And then after that, we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of this series and start to actually make some, uh, make a spaceship and stuff and get some art loaded in and actually start blowing things up and stuff. All right. So I hope you liked the video. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Like, subscribe, comment. You know the drill. Have a great day.